This way. During the events of Resident Evil 2, William Birkin had been betrayed by Umbrella, and they sent in the USS Alpha team led by Hunk to take the G-Virus from him. Birkin ended up being gunned down, and they took the virus from him. All but one sample remained in the hands of William Birkin. With that sample alone, he injected it into his own body and took the Alpha team down before they could get away with the case containing the T and G virus samples. From this moment in the game, you as either Leon or Claire has to escape the police station before William Birkin finds them. But what you didn't know was that Birkin didn't instantly go after them. He actually escaped from the sewers and headed off into the streets of Raccoon City to infect more hosts. This is where we meet a zookeeper by the name of Patrick Brady. Brady was working a morning shift at the Raccoon City Zoo, when suddenly he hears loud strange noises coming from the zoo animals. As he heads over to check what's going on, he finds two of his employee friends completely devoured by what is most likely one of the zoo creatures. One would assume it was a lion or a tiger that did this, but it's even worse. It's the G-Virus infected William Birkin, and his current targets are the zoo tigers. The tigers attacking Birkin couldn't put up a fight at all, and luckily they all tried fighting against Birkin instead of going after Brady as he happens to be right next to them. Brady fires his weapon at Birkin, but as expected, it isn't doing much damage at all and it looks as he's about to be the next victim. But as William Birkin approaches, his daughter Sherry screams out loud and this makes Birkin stop, turn around and go after her. I'm not sure if this means that Sherry was actually outside, but at this point in time, she should have been somewhere between the Raccoon City Police Department or the underground area that connects to the Umbrella Lab. Brady mentions that he also heard the scream and doesn't know who it was, so she couldn't have been too far. But he's glad it happened, otherwise he'd surely be dead by now. So he runs off to call for backup. As Brady heads over to the headquarters of the zoo to call for help, the animals that Birkin attacked are starting to reanimate and they instantly get up and chase after Brady. Luckily, he manages to reach HQ before they tear him apart. He locks the door behind him and before he can even start contacting help, someone is already reaching out for assistance. The person on the other side is looking for Claire. Brady responds, but during their conversation, it isn't explained whether it's Leon on the other side, but since Leon did get a walkie-talkie to communicate with Claire, then chances are that it's actually Leon who's speaking with Brady. Brady is informed that the G-Virus has begun spreading all over the zoo, and that the person that's communicating with him is too occupied to help. So it's up to Brady to handle things on his own and find a way to destroy all the zoo creatures before they infect others. Brady quickly remembers that the zoo park is riddled with generators and underground conducts that contain the animals, and it's been threatening to overload. So if he disables a safety override, he might just be able to blow up the entire park, taking the zoo creatures down with it. The generators are at the utility shed, so Brady prepares himself to go back out and see if he can reach the utility shed without getting killed. But first, he arms himself with as many weapons and ammunition to kill anything in his path. Now that he's ready, he kicks the door open and heads for the utility shed which happens to be across the zoo, so it's going to be tougher than it sounds. The first creature that approaches him is a large infected snake, which he easily disposes of with a shotgun blast to the head. Now the next in line is a rampaging gorilla, and for this creature, Brady uses a weapon that appears to look a lot like the spark shot that you find in Resident Evil 2. The spark shot was developed by Umbrella to deal with BOWs, which are bioorganic weapons. So it almost sounds like Umbrella was expecting for the zoo security to have powerful weapons worthy of taking down the creatures they created in the first place. But aside from that, the spark shot manages to take out the infected gorilla and the next animals that attack Brady happen to be infected prairie dogs. This is the first and only time we ever see infected prairie dogs in the Resident Evil universe. Can you imagine having to deal with these kind of creatures? They might seem simple to kill, but if they can come out of the ground in groups and attack you, that would be a lot tougher to handle than you'd expect. Brady takes down the surrounding prairie dogs and manages to reach the utility shed, as planned. He disables a safety override and triggers the chain reaction and runs for his life before getting caught in the explosion. When the power surge reaches the main generator buried deep under the zoo, a thunderous explosion rips apart the entire area and Brady barely manages to avoid it. Several hours pass by. 
Brady gets up and sees that the zoo has been completely destroyed along with the infected zoo creatures. The zoo headquarters isn't completely destroyed, so Brady goes back inside to take shelter in. And as he walks in, it appears that the radio is still working, most likely because there was a battery backup. And the person he was communicating with reaches out to Brady again. The person on the radio doesn't say who he is again, but he does mention that he along with Claire have destroyed Umbrella headquarters. Brady lets him know that he also managed to destroy the zoo along with all the infected zoo creatures. Leon, who is most likely the one communicating with Brady, thanks him for his help and informs him that as long as he did get rid of all the zoo critters, the town should be safe. This is where they end their conversation. Brady says that he never wants to go through something like this ever again, but it's not like every day you get to save a city. Brady then proceeds to get some sleep after all he went through, clearly deserving to get some rest after saving the city. But as he rests, he looks forward to leaving Raccoon City the next day and make a fresh start. Or at least, that's the last thought that went through his mind, because it turns out that a prairie dog survived the explosion by taking shelter inside the zoo headquarters, and it then proceeds to infect Brady while he sleeps. This is where Brady's story ends. Brady was one hell of a fighter against the zombie outbreak. It's a damn shame that he ended up dying without even knowing it because he was attacked while he was sleeping. This was one of many characters that fought hard to survive from the Raccoon City outbreak, and in the end, death found its way to the zookeeper, Patrick Brady. Now this was yet another example that the prairie dogs are more dangerous than you'd expect, because if it didn't take shelter inside the zoo HQ, then chances are that it survived by digging underground to avoid the explosion. It surprises me that till today we've never seen any infected prairie dogs in any of the Resident Evil games. Even for Resident Evil Outbreak File 2, which included the Raccoon City Zoo as one of the locations in the game, you do fight off against infected zoo animals but none of them happen to be infected prairie dogs. Now one question I have towards this story is that Raccoon City was already under attack by the zombies in the streets before William Birkin decided to attack the zoo. So the zookeeper and everyone else in that area should have known about the outbreak before Birkin decided to attack the zoo. Raccoon City must have been one huge ass city for areas like the zoo to not be notified by the strange attacks going on. The virus started spreading the previous night and the time the zookeeper dealt with Birkin, well, that was the next day at 7.45 a.m. The virus spread quicker than expected, but since the city police chief was working for Umbrella, then there's a chance that he ended up doing one hell of a great job keeping everyone unaware that the city was being attacked by zombies and the bioorganic weapons. One last thing to know about this Resident Evil comic book story is that aside from the infected prairie dogs, we also got to see infected tigers, baboons, pandas, bears, and gorillas, all of which were never present in any of the Resident Evil video games. The only game that would have included zombie gorillas was Resident Evil 2, formerly known as Resident Evil 1.5, but that version was scrapped and they also got rid of the zombie gorillas, but so far for the rest of the infected zoo animals that I mentioned, they haven't been included, but I'm sure that with the franchise growing throughout the years, we'll surely get a version of them in the future. But anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please leave a like, share with others, and subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget to click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button to notify you of every new video that gets uploaded to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr to find out which videos are up next and whatever random posts I make. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.